this is going to be another question and answer video. And a uh, brother in Christ in Brazil has a question basically about walking alone. What do you do if you can't find a Bible-believing church or have any good Christian people to be around that you know of? And he explains how in Brazil that all the Baptist churches have gone into apostasy. They fell away from the truth. The churches are not a stranger to that here either. So... You know, the Bible talks about in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. For example, I know more churches around here who don't use the King James Bible than that do use the King James Bible. And out of the ones who use it, there are even less that believe it. But the first thing to remember is that God has compassion on those who are alone. In Genesis 2.18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So we saw that Adam was alone and he had compassion on him. So whether it be a wife or friends, the Lord knows that man wants someone to fellowship with on this earth, even though we have him. Some people may say, well, all I need is God, and that is true in a sense. But when it comes right down to it, He is all you need, but He also made you to need other people. And 1 Peter 5, 9 says, The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Remember, when you're alone, that you're not the only one that feels alone. Anything you're going through, another saint is also going through it somewhere in the world. And if you're the only Bible believer around your area, then this is a great opportunity to let the Lord bring a Bible-believing move of God in your location. It may just start out with one or two people. Maybe you and a friend. Maybe you and your wife. In Matthew 18, 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, this brother in Christ who sent this question also explains how there are some fundamental Baptist churches around him. But the doctrine that they have is just a little bit off. So, my answer to that question is, if it's only off on a few things, and they have the right Bible and the right gospel, then I would just go there. Now, when it comes to finding a church, if all you have is a fundamentalist church, but they use the King James Bible and it's right on the gospel, then that's just fine. Go ahead and go. I mean, even if they don't completely understand stuff like dispensationalism and stuff like that, even if they have some minor things that they're off on, even if they don't get too deep in the Bible, and maybe they, all, maybe they just stick with the practical things and the devotional things of the Bible, if the pastor is preaching from the King James Bible and has the right gospel, then he's going to be used of God in a good way if he's right with God, even if he doesn't get deep into doctrine and things like that. It's just good to, to go there and be around other Christians. Many times also we think we are alone, and we really aren't alone. This is when God re requires us to look for somebody. You know, if, if someone is searching for a Christian wife, you know, he should pray for one while he looks. Don't just sit around and and think that, it, that she's just going to fall on your doorstep. You know, you need to... God requires you to put, put some effort into finding a Christian wife. Just like if a Christian desires fellowship, then he should pray for Christian friends while he looks for them at the same time. But Elijah thought he was alone. He thought everybody around him was a, a sellout and a false prophet. But he just didn't know any better. In Romans eleven two through 4, it says, For God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. I guarantee you that there's somebody that God can bring into your life that's a Christian or 
is around you that you don't even know about that's a Christian. There were 7,000 men who hadn't bowed the knee to the image of Baal. A lot of times when someone first gets saved, though, and they learn a lot of things, and they really want a pastor who teaches everything that they teach and has the same convictions that they have, so they have all these high expectations, and when they go to a church, they think that that pastor's got to fit that mold, but he won't. And it's hard to find someone just like you. So that's what you need to realize when you, maybe you go to one of these churches. The pastor may not be just like you. He may not get deep in the Bible like you want him to. It may just be, you know, practical things. Sunday in and Sunday out. And never really get deep in the Bible. And I mean, that's not, I mean, that could be better, but that's not just a horrible thing. Or the pastor may even have a completely different personality than you have. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, For who maketh thee to differ from one another? It's God that makes us different. We are all different. So we shouldn't try to fit each other in a little box. If you try to fit each other in a little box, then you'll never be happy in any church around any Christians because you're going to be too busy trying to get them in your box. You see, people are so different. Some people are quiet. Some people are loud. Some people like to get deep in the Bible. Others just read it and they just get comfort from it and they like the devotional aspects of the Bible. Christians are just different and God made us to be different. But, you know, I can listen to a preacher using the King James Bible and he could even be a post-tribber and I could, I could still get something out of it. God uses his words and if a man has the words and he's faithful to them, and isn't changing them, then God will use them even with his minor imperfections on doctrine. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. When you go to a church, don't listen to the pastor in a critical way. You know, don't be afraid to question things. You don't just want to blindly follow somebody. But don't approach it as a, be so skeptical and critical. Listen to it. Learn it. Learn from it. And if something comes up that is unbiblical, then just throw it out. But take the rest. Take the good things. Don't take the bad things. Don't approach the sermon looking for something to be mad about. Some people sit through a sermon and hear one thing and they don't like it and then focus on that the entire time. And then they just say, well, this, this guy is not, is not good. I'm just not going to go back anymore. And that, you're just being too hard on people. A temptation is to look at all the churches who are lacking in certain areas and just say, well, I'm not going there for this reason or for that reason. And they just go off and they become a lone ranger and they stay by themselves. And you see many teachers today who say you just need to get by yourself because basically everyone is so lousy and will never be as right with God as they are. So they just get alone. You know, it gets to the point where you, you, you listen to these people and it's like they think that they're the only ones who are saved. Even the men that they learn from, maybe even the man that got them saved and then they learn from certain men, now they're saying that all those people are unsaved. And it's just crazy. But Paul says in Galatians 1, 2, he said, And all the brethren which are with me. Paul had people with him. He was not a lone ranger. He did not want to be by himself. Paul had some fellow helpers. He said in 2 Corinthians eight twenty three, Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of they are the messengers of the churches and of the glory of christ philemon verse 24 marcus aristarchus demas lucas my fellow laborers philippians 4 3 and i entreat thee also true yoke fellow help those women which labored with me in the gospel with clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life so paul was by no means a lone ranger and not everybody can find a Bible-believing church. But if you can, then I believe you should go and learn from the pastor. 
It may not be a perfect, it's probably not going to be a perfect church. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect pastor. And even if you know more Bible than the pastor does, he still has a lot more experience than you and probably a lot more wisdom. So you should go there and back him up, even with his imperfections. No pastor is always right. No pastor is always right on doctrine. No pastor is sinless. No pastor is going to have all the dispensational teachings completely correct. If they are teaching things like men in the Old Testament were born again and part of the body of Christ, these things you can easily overlook if they have the right Bible, if they have a good spirit, if, if they have the right gospel. Something I figured out as a Christian is that Christians are way too hard on each other. And we need to remember that we are all members of the same body. If you look at 1 Corinthians twelve fourteen through 27, this is a long, a lot of verses here, but just listen to it as I read. It says, For the body is not one member, but many. It's not just you and the body, there's many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. If they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. So you can see there, we're all part of the body if we're born again. We're all needed. We all make up the body. I can't look at you and say that you're not needed. You can't look at me and say I'm not needed. You know, having... Christians around you is important. Every single born again person is your brother and sister in Christ. They might stink, they might be mean, they might almost be impossible to get along with along with. But we got to remember that if someone has believed on Jesus Christ, then they are members of the same body as us, and we need to try our best to get along with them if it is possible. Romans twelve eighteen, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now Okay, now a more worst case scenario. Now, if there really is no option, if all the churches have the wrong Bible and they are teaching things like Calvinism and that baptism is required for salvation or just any corruption of the gospel, you know, then I would do something else. I wouldn't go there. But Philemon, verse 2 says, And to the church in thy house. Paul's talking to somebody, he says, and to the church in thy house. He says, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Get some Christians together and start a church in your house. I do believe you need a pastor, as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, where he said, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. And as Paul told Titus in Titus 1.5, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So if you get a church in your house, then you do need a pastor. So let's say you don't have one. If you don't have one, then start praying for one. And while you're praying for one, you and those few Christians you have can gather around and watch a Bible believer preach on YouTube, on DVD, or on a CD, or whatever you may have. And the the brother who sent this email mentioned that he got saved listening to Robert Breaker. Robert Breaker is a great teacher and would be great in this situation because he's already got tons of sermons and studies already made up for a group of Christians to feast on. You could do that until you get a pastor. 
And until you find a pastor, keep listening to men like Robert Breaker, somebody like that. Listen to his preaching and learn the Bible from him. And then maybe God can make you the pastor. You'll learn, you'll learn, you'll sit under him and learn the Bible. But some men might not like that idea because they'll say you have to be sent out. Well, in this case, there ain't even anybody to send you out. So you just have to say, Lord, here am I, send me, and the Lord will send you. Okay, now let's talk about worst case scenario. Say that you don't have any good Bible-believing churches around. So you don't have any Christian friends at all that you know of to even start a church in your house. What you can do is start from scratch, from the very bottom. Go out every day and win as many souls as you can and invite them to fellowship with you and learn the Bible. This may take forever for you to get somebody to get saved and then take even longer for you to get somebody to fellowship with you and learn the Bible with you. But th this is just what you have to do in, in this type of situation. When dealing with others and other Christians and new Christians, you have to remember that everyone is on a different level of what they know, especially someone who just got saved. Everyone is an individual. They are different. God made us different. God uses different men with different personalities. You want a fellowship with others who have the right gospel and the right Bible. And if they are off on their doctrine, then you can kindly and graciously and privately pull them to the side and show them the correct doctrine. Someone can know a lot of Bible and be a qualified Bible teacher and yet still be off on some doctrine. And if he is sincere, then he will change his beliefs to fit the Bible. So, for example, say that you, uh, you, you finally meet a, a, a good Christian to fellowship with, but yet you see he's lacking in some doctrine. He's got some doctrine wrong. This story here in Acts 18 will show you a good example of what you can do. In Acts 18.24, it says, And a certain Jew named Apollos... Born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So he's mighty in the scriptures. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took at him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So you don't just have to just not have anything to do with this person because they got some bad doctrine. You can kindly show someone the way of God more perfectly. And you never know, that could become somebody that you can now fellowship with because they've changed their doctrine. But this brother also asked, what should uh, a people do who can't speak English and can't read the King James Bible? Well, the easy answer to that is, there are Bibles that are translated from the King James into other languages. And you can use those. So just because you can't speak English, that doesn't mean you don't have a Bible. Because there's Bibles uh, tr that translated from the King James. But what it comes down to is, if you are giving an effort and trying to work for God, then He's going to take care of you and lead you into truth. I mean, this guy seems like he's in a tough situation. He's in a place where he feels like, you know, the churches around him are in apostasy he doesn't have any good Christian friends. He can't find any good Christian friends. But he, he this is one of them situations where you're just going to have to get to work, really. You're going to have to go out there, start winning souls, which we need to be doing anyway. And if you can't find somebody to fellowship with, then you go out and get some people saved, and then there's you somebody to fellowship with. And if you can't get anyone to fellowship with at all, another even worse scenario, email to scattered Christians across the world and fellowship that way. But I believe if you really pray and really go try to get someone saved, then you can make Christian friends. And the brother who sent this question has also asked, what about those in the world who have never heard the gospel? Would God send them to hell unjustly? And the quick answer is that God doesn't send anyone to hell unjustly. And when someone hasn't heard the gospel, if they're seeking the, the truth, then God is obligated to send it to them. Cornelius, for example, was sent the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 10. God sends missionaries to places that don't have the gospel. Uh, God has put a light in his creation. Uh, and it shows people that God is real. God has put something in the heart of man 
that shows them that there is a God. And when they respond to that, God is obligated to send them the truth of the gospel. And for example, in Acts chapter 8, he sent Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch who was reading out of the book of Isaiah. Uh, that man was searching for the truth. God was obligated to send him the truth through Philip. And the Bible says in Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God has put enough evidence in creation to make everybody without excuse. Even people who you, who you think ha, have never heard the gospel. And it says in John 1, 9, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Talking about Jesus Christ. He's, he's put a light. He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So the ones that you think don't have enough light to be saved, they do have enough light to be saved. And God never sends anybody to hell unjustly. But if you think there's someone out there that hasn't heard, you can be the person that God uses to get the gospel to them. If you're in a place, you know, like this this guy is in, you could be that person. You could be Philip. You could be Peter that get that God uses to get the gospel to that person. And then that, if that person gets saved, that's somebody for you to fellowship with. And hey, you get two or three of those people you got three converts there, and you, right there is your church. You can start teaching the Bible. And I mean, if you don't, if God may end up calling you to pastor. You know, this guy seems like somebody God could use to pastor, judging by reading his emails. But I hope that's helped the person. So the, the um, answer to the question is, you know, if, now he said there was some fundamental Baptist churches around. If those churches got the right Bible and the right gospel, I will go to those churches, sit under that pastor, back up that pastor, and learn all you can from him. At the same time, continue to learn doctrine by Bible believers off the internet. And you could even go ahead and, and uh, continue. You know, you, you're going to be winning souls anyways. You could go ahead and start a little Bible study yourself and start a Bible believing work on the side there. And then say, a worst case, more worst case scenario, there is no good church there that you can find. You've tried all the churches. Get you and maybe your family, some other Christian friends, start a church in your house. Listen to Bible preaching on the internet together. Sing some songs together. Another worst case scenario, if you don't even have any Christian friends whatsoever. I mean... You're just going to have to get out there and win some souls to the Lord Jesus Christ because, I mean, you're supposed to be doing that anyway. And start from scratch. Build your own little Bible-believing work that way. And you teach them the Bible. You teach them what you've learned from men like Robert Breaker, as you said you listened to. But I hope this is a help to you and other people that have heard the answer to this question.